How's it going? Uh, it's a pleasure to be your uh, Anyan Aseo. Uh, <laughs> it's my first time in Korea, so you know I'm trying to I'm trying to learn how to to speak Korean. Um, so yeah, um, I'm Jide Fashola, head of integrations at Cardano Foundation. I'm uh, based in Dublin, Ireland, but I'm originally from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, so I'm here to talk about uh, sustainability and. Um, so sustainability of blockchain and blockchain for sustainability. So let's delve into it a little bit. So what is sustainability actually? Um, I will define sustainability as the balance between equity, economy, and environment. Um, so at Cardano, we like to look at sustainability as two different aspects. So the first one is blockchain and sustainability. And the second part would be sustainability of blockchain. So the UN, as we all know, has defined a bunch of SDG goals, right, which uh, should basically govern how we do things in our environment to ensure that our future is, is stable, right? And um, so Cardano is looking at three different options and more options in the future to ensure that we are actually aligned with the UN goals that have been defined. So what is Cardano doing to actually ensure blockchain uh, helps sustainability programs defined by the UN? So let's delve into it a little bit. So right now we are working with the UN um, and we are working with them to ensure that we are actually supporting their goals. And what we are doing there is we set up a stake pool with a company called Taris, which is a Swiss-based infrastructure provider. And what we're doing there with them is we, that stake pool, after every five days, the, the, um, the funds that are being distributed to the stake pools for minting blocks on the network is then used to actually fund the initiatives for the UN, right? So for example, the Ukraine crisis and other humanitarian aid. Uh, so right now, Cardano has distributed or contributed over three million. ADA, uh, and the community as well has contributed over 1 million ADA to support these goals. As part of that as well, we are working with a company called NMKR, and they are an NFT provider. And what we are doing there with them is we are creating NFTs, right, where the sales and the proceedings of those NFTs are then used as well for the UN initiatives. So that's one piece that Cardano Foundation is working with the UN to ensure that we actually uh, achieve those goals. So the second piece is um, we have actually um, partnered with a company uh, called Nomena, Nomena and DB Shank. Uh, and those, that company is looking to, I suppose, um, create the carbon emission uh, tokens and carbon offset tokens to actually ensure that you're able to trace the emissions of each company that is producing carbon and also offset those emissions. So what that really means is if company X is emitting a thousand tons of carbon per year, they're actually able to then offset those carbon, uh, uh, talk, uh, offset those carbon emissions by um, contributing to projects that are looking to, to I suppose, um, ensure that, uh, yeah, so they're looking to uh, ensure that the offset is done with companies like that are working on reforestation, for example, like Veritree and so on. So when you offset a thousand tons, you're able to then, uh, sorry, when you emit a thousand tons, you're able to then offset that thousand tons by contributing to these companies that are focused on reforestation and other uh, initiatives. So we are working closely with them to, to, to actually ensure that we, we achieve these goals. And in order to get there, we need to understand a few things, right? So we need to understand the, the standards that have, been defined by, uh, that have been defined by ISO, right? And those standards then have to be mapped, right, into data and into our metadata to facilitate the tracing of emissions. Right, and the way we are doing that is we are trying to initiate our native assets, right, to be able to create um, 
these emission tokens. So native assets in Cardano is defined is a bracket of two things. It's a bracket of non-fungible tokens and fungible tokens. So in this case, we are referring to the non-fungible tokens aspect of things. And as part of this, we would also obviously create um, an automated reporting process because in order to be able to trace and ensure that there is no you know, double counting or double compensation or double spending, they need to be able to verify that the information that's put on the blockchain is actually right. So that's another piece that we're working on with a number of companies to ensure that we capture these emission tokens. And uh, lastly, our community is also doing a fantastic job in helping us in achieving these goals. And what you're doing right now is there's an initiative called uh, Climate Neutral Cardano. And this initiative was defined or brought to life by stake pool operators in our ecosystem. So obviously, as you know, stake pools are the people that mint transactions on a network. And in order to meet transaction on a network, you would obviously emit carbon by using computing machines to actually produce these blocks. Uh, so instead of using your traditional ways of, of I suppose, minting blocks, uh, our community or 10 stake pools within our community have decided to start using 100% renewable energy, like solar energy, tidal energies, and so on, to actually start minting transactions on the network. Right now, we only have 10 SPOs that are working on this, but that number is supposed to grow over time, obviously. And another cool thing that you're doing is they've also decided that whatever percentage, sorry, whatever, um, rewards they get back from minting transactions, they contribute 10% of those rewards right, to initiatives of projects that are looking to offset carbon tokens, like Very Tree, for example, that is creating trees across the globe to offset emissions of carbon. Now, let's delve into sustainability of blockchain. So what does that really mean? In order to sustain a blockchain, there are multiple aspects to it. There is interoperability, there is scalability, there is the ability to ensure that we are actually able to upgrade the system without any sort of issues. So let's talk a little bit about the scalability side. So Cardano is doing multiple things to ensure that the blockchain is scalable. And these are just a few things that we're working on right now. So to talk a little bit about each one, um, so on-chain performance improvements, for example, um, when we did the Vasil hard fork, which was um, the hard fork that introduced a number of things to our ecosystem, we realized that we need to increase the block size, we need to increase the Pluto script size to actually facilitate more transactions and to make the system much faster. Because after the hard fork, we realized that things were a little bit slower. So on-chain performance improvements would include things like Increasing block size, increasing Pluto size, node enhancements, and perhaps diffusion pipelining to ensure that when stake pools are producing blocks, they produce the blocks faster. Hydra, for example, as well, is a layer two solution that is for scalability, and um, it, it's supposed to, well, it is increasing the transaction speed. Uh, true low latency and high throughput on, on Cardano blockchain. So there are already a few DEXs that are, that are using Hydra at the moment to actually facilitate faster transactions. Uh, the likes of sidechains as well, as we know, Mithril, which is supposed to, or Mithril, which is allowing for the node to sync much faster than it currently is right now. And obviously, that would contribute to environment as well, because if the node is taking so much long to sync, it means that you're using so much processing power to sync it, right? So reducing that process, processing power also helps and contributes to environment. And as we go on, as the system evolves, um, for people who don't know, the proof of stake algorithm that Cardano uses is called Ouroboros. Uh, so initially, we started with Ouroboros Classic, which was the first uh, piece of it, and we've been evolving Ouroboros over time as the system grows. Uh, so right now, we are currently on Ouroboros Prowls, but we're looking to, to create more uh, flavors of Ouroboros, which, for example, we refer to Ouroboros Leos. So Ouroboros Leos is meant to 
increase the throughput of Cardano network. On the security and interoperability side of things, which is pretty exciting at the moment, is um, so as you know, Cardano is based off formal methods. It's also developed in Haskell, which is a pure functional programming language. And it's safer than most programming languages, as we already know today. Um, another thing we are doing to ensure security on the blockchain is we partnered with HackerOne. Uh, HackerOne is basically a software company that helps with, I suppose, ensuring that your system is safe, more or less. So what they do is they try to find loopholes in the system, and then they come back to us with those loopholes, and we try to fix them. So it's called the Bunk Bounty Program. We've been working on that for a number of years now. Besides, besides that, we are also doing a smart contract auditing. We've defined different processes to ensure that systems that develop in smart contracts on our ecosystem follow these methodologies to ensure that there are no loopholes or leaks within your programs. On the interoperability side of things, uh, recently we did a hard fork, Valentine's hard fork, on Valentine's Day, actually, funny enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was working on Valentine's Day this year. Uh, but so what we released was um, a crypto primitive called SECP256K1. And that basically supports ECDSA and short signatures, which means that Cardano developers now, when they're building programs, they're able to actually understand how Bitcoin creates the private and public keys and they can interact with it. And one of the key reasons that actually inspired us to do this was one chain, which is a bridge for interoperability, reached out to us to discuss how we can actually create uh, uh, or introduce this crypto primitive into our uh, built-in functions on Cardano blockchain. So we released that, and now Cardano is interoperable with a lot of blockchains using the one-chain bridge. As aforementioned as well, developers are able to interact with how Bitcoin creates private and public keys. Um, and then recently, during Cardano Summit in Dubai, we announced something called Partner Chains. So Partner Chains is very cool because what we are able to do there is we're able to get blockchains such as Midnight, for example, to interact with our chain using the substrate framework that Polkadot actually uses today. And that's really cool because Midnight, it's, which is a zero-knowledge proof blockchain, interacts with our blockchain based on things they're, they're missing on their side. And Midnight is super cool because for example, with health data, you don't want everyone seeing your health information on a blockchain, right? So Midnight actually abstracts that layer and ensures that people don't really see the information that you don't want them to see. Uh, so, so that's another part of interoperability that we've recently worked on. And there are other things that we're working on with different, uh, with different projects that we can't really talk about right now, unfortunately. Now, uh, when it comes to, I suppose, giving the power back to the ecosystem, because that's the final phase of Cardano. So Cardano started from the Byron era, and the final phase that we are in right now is the Volta era. And what, that, what, the, what does that really mean? So there's something called the seven rings of power. <laughs> I know it sounds like a movie or something, Avengers, if anyone is into Avengers. Uh, so the seven rings of power is the three chains or three arms that anchor Cardano right now. There's IOG, which is the development arm, Cardano Foundation, ourselves, which we look after the ecosystem and ensure everything works fine. And then Imargo as well, which is also does the same thing as we do, but they're yeah, more on the investment side of things. So we're all working together right now with the community to ensure that, or to actually facilitate moving these rings of power back into the community so that people in the community are able to vote on the future advancement of Cardano blockchain. Because right now, only these three companies are deciding on the future of Cardano blockchain, right? Because they hold the seven rings of power, as aforementioned. So these rings of power will be diminished and the ecosystem will be able to start deciding on how we actually move forward with things. So we've introduced a voting and treasury mechanism 
So the treasury obviously comes from transaction fees and so on, and that goes back into the development of the ecosystem. So there's a process which is coined as Cardano Improvement Proposals, and those improvement proposals are put in by the community, and people vote on what is supposed to go ahead or what can't go ahead. So in order to facilitate that voting process, we've defined uh, the constitution which follows our goals and values and morals. Uh, we've defined a member-based organization, which is called Intersect, that allows for different companies in the ecosystem to come together and actually um, vote on how uh, uh, the technology advancement of Cardano move forward or not. Uh, so the constitutional community, committee, committee um, ensures that the constitution of Cardano is actually met whenever any of these changes are supposed to be introduced. And uh, finally, you have delegated reps and SPOs. So SPOs are stake pool operators. Uh, so stake pool operators would be able to vote as well based off what has been delegated to them by the Cardano ecosystem. DREPs as well is the same thing. The only difference is with a DREP, you don't make transactions on the network. So people can actually delegate to you and you can use their delegation as voting, uh, as a voting power to ensure the future advancement of Cardano blockchain. So on the adoption side of things, well, what have we been doing? So recently the Cardano, Engineer, Cardano Foundation engineering team released uh, Cardano Explorer. Uh, so the Cardano Explorer is kind of the same as what the community has developed for explorers, but this explorer is supposed to be an enterprise-based enterprise explorer. So companies are able to use it for the enterprise solutions. Uh, we've also worked with um, the Georgian government to, to facilitate the supply chain traceability of the Georgian wine agency. So they create wines and we ensure that these wines that are created are actually traced from start to finish and people know that this wine is coming from the original producer. Uh, so the Georgian Wine Agency, they are looking to increase the number of wines that they produce from 200,000 to 10 million in the next few years. And this solution is supposed to facilitate that process. We are also working on an educational um, initiative with the Cardano Foundation education team. And that, uh, that spans from creating a, I suppose, uh, uh, an amateur-based blockchain education course up until an advanced blockchain education course. Because at the moment, we know that education is one of the pillars to ensure adoption of, Cardano, of blockchain in general. So we are working very hard on ensuring that we actually provide that information to the community for free. And once you actually complete that program, you get a blockchain certified uh, certification, I guess. Um, another cool thing that we did this year was we worked with uh, Epoch, a merchandise, to create 6,000 unique jerseys for the 2023 World Lacrosse Championship. And those jerseys actually were integrated with NFCs, which are linked to NFTs on Cardano blockchain. So you're able to trace and ensure that those jerseys that were created come from the actual source, which is super cool. And it can actually be replicated across, I suppose, every other sports team. I guess Chili's is in the crowd here. We need to talk about how we can integrate that solution with you guys. Um, and then we, for Cardano Summit, we created a ballot system which allows people to vote on, suppose, the best projects in the ecosystem. The point of this ballot system, besides enabling people to vote on the best projects in the ecosystem, is also to create a benchmark application for on-chain voting. So this will be used for voting in the future on Cardano blockchain to ensure that the uh, technological advancement of Cardano is done the right way. On the developer side of things, right now, the issue is that Cardano is developed in Haskell. Most people don't know how to develop in Haskell. So we need to be able to ensure that we create some sort of abstraction layer to allow people to start integrating with the languages that you're familiar with. And one thing we're doing is we, are, we recently uh, released the Ledger Sync. So Ledger Sync is kind of like a, uh, 
kind of like a database where people are able to interact with the transactions of Cardano blockchain. But this time, instead of using Haskell, which it was originally developed with, uh, called DBSync, where it's now a Java-based uh, program. So Java developers are able to understand and interact with, I suppose, Cardano data, which would open the market for over 10 million Java developers, which is super cool. Um, we also created a um, identity-based application on Cardano to uh, create open frameworks and to contribute to in the, uh, into integration of identity uh, solutions on Cardano blockchain. Uh, our identity team are really working hard on, on ensuring these frameworks are done the right way and they follow the, the standards that have been defined. Um, so, on the, so we've spoken about the enablement of, of, of developers in the ecosystem. One thing I would like to touch upon there as well is the HAL. So HAL is um, a set of tools that allows exchanges and other parties, individuals, to interact with Cardano blockchain. Uh, so most exchanges right now that interact with Cardano use this address here stack, which involves you know, Cardano Rosetta, GraphQL, the node, wallet, and so on. So we're working, the engineering team is working to actually make this integration process much easier for exchanges and third parties to integrate with Cardano ecosystem. And on the empowerment side of things, as we discussed with Cardano Academy, we are also doing something called, um, we're working with the University of Zurich in Switzerland, uh, and we sponsored a PhD course actually there in blockchain ana analytics. So which is super cool because we're allowing people to understand how the blockchain works and do research on how to analyze blockchain. Um, uh, lastly, we are also working on women in tech, uh, basically to, to introduce them to Cardano blockchain, introduce them to blockchain, give them education on how things work and empower them to integrate solutions on Cardano blockchain. So, I would just like to state that um, in the industry today, it seems that a lot of people or a lot of chains are looking to work alone, right? And it seems to be a competition between chains. Whereas we're supposed to work together, we're supposed to be interoperable to create an ecosystem for everybody to integrate into, into the blockchain. So I would like to, or I hope that in the future, this changes and we're able to work closely with other chains and other layer two networks to ensure that we provide a good ecosystem for people to integrate uh, blockchain solutions and also abstract the layer for blockchain integration and reduce the barrier of entry for blockchain integration. Because right now, if you're not technical, it's very hard to actually understand anything about blockchain. So in order to facilitate adoption, it's imperative for us to, to reduce this barrier of entry and to abstract the layer of technical, suppose, terms and so on. Um, so that's it for me, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jide Fashola. I think that we have some questions and a little bit of time. Uh, so I think that we have one question that we had sent in from uh, in advance. So I'll ask that and turn to the floor for anyone who has uh, some questions. So here's the question. Um, it's only been quite recent since uh, some companies have been discussing ESG as well as uh, a sustainability. Um, but if you think about you know, regulations and uh, policies, uh, and considering that the Web3 environment is uh, advancing at quite a rapid pace, do you think that it's quite early to discuss a sustainability uh, under the Web3 environment when it's uh, a little bit too early even to discuss uh, it under Web2 environments? And in addition to that, compared to Web2 and Web3, um, among the blockchain technologies, what do you think it is, that element that helps advance the discussion on sustainability and move it forward? 
Um, I think it's never too early to start looking into how we can capture or start reporting about uh, sustainability goals. Uh, the earlier we start doing it, the better, because then this way we are able to actually learn as we go. And when it's time to actually start doing the work, we know what to do and we are prepared for it. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's never too early. And uh, what do you think it is that element that helps advance the discussion on sustainability forward, um, comparing Web 2 and Web 3? I think the main thing there would be education. Uh, we need to educate people, we need to educate regulators on, on how blockchain works, the impact of blockchain on society, and suppose how we can advance uh, uh, blockchain with sustainability and help with the goals of sustainability. Education, I believe, is the, is the key thing here. All right, thank you. Education is key. I think that we have a little bit of time, and I'd like to turn to the floor uh, for anyone in the audience who has any questions. So I am uh, from KDI, and I have a question related to one of your uh, slides. Um, you mentioned that you actually provide 100% uh, renewable energy. Um, in that part, I would like to know the process and where the source of that 100% renewable energy is. Who is a supplier of that energy? How do you bring it and how do you procure it? Is it ESS? Is it solar energy? So what is the procurement process and where is the source of that energy? Um, so this process is actually facilitated by Cardano community and not Cardano Foundation. So we are not, uh, I suppose, part of the procurement of, of this energy source. Um, all we are doing is just to ensure that we help the community wherever we can with, with maybe, I suppose, um, letting people know about this initiative that we're working on. So Cardano Foundation is not a part of that initiative itself. Cardano community are the ones that are actually working on that initiative, but I could I suppose discuss with the 10 SPOs that are working on this, get some information about your procurement process, and I could let you know.